Hey everyone, Sakura Yasin here, and rather than do a podcast this month, or a, a stream or something, I figured it might be a nice change of pace for me to do a regular old tutorial. Um, and this one's going to be on effective composition using shapes. Now, um, Keenan Lafferty and Cynics have both made uh, really good videos talking about shapes and uh, shape design and using, uh, you know, small, medium, and large shapes uh, in combinations to create uh, effective uh, designs and things. Um, so definitely uh, check those guys out. I think they did great jobs on talking about shapes. But uh, I think, although I'm not as experienced with shapes, I feel like I still have perhaps uh, a perspective that could be fruitful to, to someone. So let's talk about shapes and why they're important. So the first thing I have to mention it is a rather broad topic and it's what is the most important things in art uh, that make a thing appealing. And I feel like there's two uh, most important things uh, for appeal. Um, and appeal is kind of something that, you know, you just like the thing and it's kind of, uh, it's hard to describe as a thing, uh, but it's super important, right? Because, I mean, if someone looks at your work and they like it, that's good. And if they don't, that's probably they're not going to look at your work too much longer. Um, so you want appeal, and I feel like the two ways of getting uh, appeal, one is uh, psychology. Uh, psychology. And uh, this includes, like, biology, I guess, because it's basically you create subject matter that appeals to someone's psyche, whether that is... Uh, certain uh, things the person likes. For instance, you might you might draw like a cat and the person likes cats and then they're like, hey, cool, it's a cat. So, hey, this is appealing to me because it is cat. Um, you might draw this and be, well, you know, these shoes are mighty appealing to me. Uh, <laughs> whatever it is, but that's that's kind of... I feel like that's like the, the king, and that's kind of also, uh, you could say it's ideas. Ideas uh, which you respond to on a psychological or perhaps biological level. That's one way of achieving uh, appeal. The other way, which is probably the only way that really is worth uh, teaching, I feel, or I don't know, maybe I'll learn how to teach this. I doubt it, because everyone's different, but who knows. But this is through contrast, or perhaps we could call it variation. Let's call it variation. That's better because contrast is a tool you use to get variety and variation. So that's pretty much that we tend to like things that um, are interesting to look at. And what makes things interesting? Well, let's, let's just make a shape, for instance. Here's a, a, a shape, okay? And let's put another shape inside it. All right, well, we have some basic shapes, you know, your primitive shapes. What should we put inside this to create contrast? Um, well, I'll make two so I can have, you know, first one and then the second one. So what are we gonna put in this to get contrast? Well, what happens if we put in a square? Well, that's uh, not too much contrast, right? Because, I mean, you've got a straight line here, you've got a straight line here. Fine, you can say this is smaller than this, so we have a contrast between size, but that's very weak. So this is, this is not good for a contrast. But let's say we put in a basic triangle. Okay, this is more interesting because you see, like, fine, this is kind of boring, this area, this space. But you've got this unique shape, this unique shape. It, it's still a lot more interesting, even a, a, a circle also, you know, still way more interesting than this, because this is the same shape within the same shape. So here we have more variety. We have a variety of shapes. Um, in this case with the circle, you have like a rounded shape and then you have a square shape, right? Uh, you could do it the other way around where we have a circle and it would be pretty boring if we just put a circle in. I mean, it's a donut, so that could uh, affect your um, psychological appeal. You might be like, well, you know, I don't care about 
design so much, but that looks, that reminds me of a donut and I could sure go for one right now. And that's very appealing to me. Uh, yeah, sure. But um, just in terms of shapes, that's less contrast than say this. It's kind of like Chinese money. Uh, it's got a, a square in it. I don't know if it still does. I just know historically it did and they would like put string anyway, irrelevant. Um, but this has more contrast and that's pretty much what you're doing in art all the time is you're creating contrast between something and something else, whether it's in painting where you might have, uh, things contrasted between light and dark, uh, hard and soft edges. Um, I mean, there's tons like smooth texture versus rough. And it's just something against something. I shouldn't even say hard uh, or and, sorry. <laughs> I should say like versus. Because you're really putting something against something else. So back to shapes and, and compositions. Why this is important is first of all, you want to create uh, contrast. So you don't want to just have a shape like this and then, you know, another shape like this and another shape like this. This is very little contrast, so it's boring. So if your designs, um, actually, I'll just show you how most people design shapes or, I mean, most beginners tend to design this way. I'm not saying all do, of course, but you have a canvas and a lot of people, what they'll do, their first thing they'll do is they'll just find a spot that feels comfortable. Usually, I suppose if you're left-handed, maybe it's like towards this side. If you're right-handed, perhaps it's towards this side. But you start by creating your whatever it is. Let's say I was drawing a, a person, right? So I'll start drawing this person. Um, and, you know, you just, you just start in one, one side, let's go. See, I'm doing the hair, so I'll start at this side and then go across. Okay, let's build the body, just starting from the top and then going down. And there we go, you know? Hey, here's our composition. Um, and that's what I consider a very bad way of starting because you're not really considering the composition. So what's a better way to start an image to make sure your composition is good? Well, the first thing is to consider uh, your first shape. So what is the first shape we're gonna use? Uh, let's just say, for instance, um, the first shape we're gonna use is like, we want a, a triangle composition. This is a very, very common composition, right? You got like a triangle. If, if you haven't seen this, just study artwork. You'll see tons of shapes built on triangles. And what I mean by this is like, I'm not saying the person has a, a picture of a triangle. I'm saying the composition fits within a triangle. So for instance, if you had a triangle, you could fit, you know, a person in here. Hey, I'm a person and I'm in this triangle. Uh, maybe they're wearing a dress. Okay, so roughly they've got hair like this. I mean, this is a bit extreme. It doesn't have to be this literal, but you have uh, this triangular shape to the composition. So, so what's the first shape you think of? Well, the mistake would be to think it's a triangle. It's not. The first shape is this. It is the frame. Always consider the frame first. That's your first big shape. And in most cases, you have a frame that's either, you know, a rectangle like this, or maybe a rectangle like this, or maybe a square like this. So, or, you know, it could be rectangle very wide, or, but it's some kind of rectangular shape often. Um, and in certain cases, you might have, you know, an oval, something like that. So you have different shapes, but usually they're one of these types or variation of that. So when you have your rectangle, it makes thinking about shapes or when you're thinking about the frame, makes thinking about shapes a lot easier because you already have a first shape. So what I like to do whenever I start a picture nowadays is I'll zoom out 
and I will consider this frame to be the first shape I'm using. Then, and, and I often use like the same, like this is just a nine by 12 format. So uh, letter size, I, I believe, or is it eight and a half by 11? I think it's eight and a half by 11. Anyway, I use this type of thing. And then it depends on what I wanna do next. So in terms of what I'm drawing, I'll try and think what is the shape that goes best with that, that would still look appealing. So if I'm doing someone who's standing up, right? Well, that's pretty much, that can be like a rectangular shape. So now I'm thinking of a rectangle in a rectangle, but I don't want to do something like this, right? Like that's boring. There are, there are more appealing ways of uh, placing a rectangle on this page. So for instance, if this is my shape, this is my rough shape of what I want, which is still pretty boring because, you know, as we said, there's very little variation here. The, the side is at the same angle as this side, which is, you know, it's very similar. But even so, if, if this is what we're using, we're using a rectangle, then there are plenty of ways of placing this. You know, we could place it here. I mean, this is boring because now you've just created this negative shape like you know, this is all the negative space and this is the positive space and it's all pushed into this corner. Whereas uh, this is already much better because you have a contrast between a lot of negative space on this side and very little negative space on this side and a medium amount of space on this side. So you've got your uh, small, medium, large shapes. And so our rectangle looks much nicer. Um, and even putting it down here, that's still better because now we have a um, bunch of negative space and then this rectangular thing kind of on the bottom. So there's contrast between nothing's touching this surface, but there's stuff touching this down surface. So that's already better. Okay, so things like that are really important. But you can also play with your rectangles in ways like this, for instance, let's say you have to have a rectangular character. Well, there's no reason you can't just tilt that rectangle and have your character fit within, like generally, you know, it's not exact, you're not gonna draw the character so they're exactly touching each side of this, but in a very general way, you can have a composition that's more based on this and just by tilting it, um, you now have variety between this negative space and this negative space and this negative space and you can have your character sort of in this area and doing stuff and it's a lot more, uh, you know, maybe they're just like holding a gun or something because that's, that's common, right? People like to draw their violence. Um, let's make it a girl. She's holding like a, her gun thing and you got like a, a dress. Okay, maybe her other hand is going down here. So, I mean, roughly she fits in this uh, rectangle space. So that's, you know, I, I can make her hair longer and then it even more accentuates the fact that this is a rectangle. Um, but it's still boring, but it's less boring than if you just made her straight up and down, you know, because there is contrast going on. But perhaps, you know, you got this arm up and you've got a lot, like when I look at this, I think, okay, so you've got a lot of this going on, like this pull, and maybe by putting something here, that would be breaking it up so this is not identical with this. So thinking stuff like that, I can just, you know, well, maybe it's better if her hand is going here somewhere, you know? Maybe she's just giving a thumbs up. I mean, this is still kind of boring, uh, maybe having the gun around here. That kind of looks like a cactuar, but still. I mean, just thinking about things that break up the, the monotony is a good way of using shapes. So, I mean, that's, the, that's a huge thing, is just consider the shape first. And why is this really important? I think it's really important because your drawing is kind of... Um, you're, you're just building and let's say you were building a house, right? You start with the foundation, you then get the walls, 
and finally you have the roof and then you start putting you know stuff inside you get your doors and your stairs and stuff but first you build the structure so the first thing you build is the foundation and if the foundation is good at least like the house might be shit it let's just put it might be a shithole house <laughs> anyway uh but at least it's not gonna fall over because of the foundation or at least like it's not gonna start sinking i mean that would be you know like uh, now it's now that's your house because your foundation and you built on like swampy or just like bad bad ground so when your beginning is good like if this part was just great the foundation no matter what you do from this point on at least you'll have a good foundation at least you know your house could be pretty bad but it's it's still better than if you had a bad foundation so what i really want people what i try and teach as well with my students a lot and this is a very hard thing to to express because as i said people don't want to think about shapes they want to think about hey i just drawn like my character and they're cool and they have a tail and the tail is here and they are playing video games or something i don't know you know the the interest in well think about shapes is secondary to hey let's just i just want to make a picture of this thing that i like um so rather than do that because here you don't have a great foundation it's like yeah okay you've made an image i mean probably it would be more accurate if it was still sort of in the middle of the page and yeah well that's not what i wanted to do uh more like that right and here's a tv or something <laughs> i don't know i guess tvs don't I don't know anything anymore. Okay, fine. It's just going off to the side. We don't know where this cord goes. Um, but you have no foundation. It's just, oh, this is, t oh yeah, I just want to draw my picture. Well, think about it more. If you have a good foundation, everything you put on top is going to be better. So again, don't know if anyone's going to care, if anyone's going to listen, but I really recommend thinking about the first thing you do, if it's good, everything afterwards is going to be better. So if you get your foundation and it's good, then you get your walls and those are awesome. Then you get your roof and it's like, yeah, this roof is very good and durable. Maybe it's got solar panels and stuff. It's like, hey, whatever you put in the inside, at least your house is well built. All right. So let's think about shapes here. Um, so there's a bunch of different shapes I could use. So let's just say I use a triangle meh it's okay it's not great this is a pretty bad design um so what's what's wrong with it well again there's a lot of negative space that's pretty regular pretty boring so what if we did something more like this where now we've got a shape that i mean it's kind of divided this into three but it's still a bit better you know you've got this triangular shape that's that's cool uh, but we can make it even more interesting like let's say we did this now this is starting to be a pretty cool shape but it could go even better so let's just like slightly tilt this maybe put something like this all right so now this is a pretty interesting shape you've got like this mild curve here this opposite curve here kind of like a sailboat shape and um if you were to make a design within this, I mean, this could be anything. Uh, that's really the beauty of it. Once you start with some basic things, I mean, I could do uh, like a super, we're looking up at a character, crazy perspective thing here. Um, could do a lot of uh, uh, different things, again, with the gun. Although it might look like something else, but... Um, like there's a lot that can be 
done. Like, oh, okay, that. Or maybe I didn't even want to do that. Maybe I'm just drawing a person. Okay, well, you know, I could put a nose and a, a face. And I'll probably make a tutorial about how to create characters using shapes because that's also really important. Um, but it's pretty much this, the same principle of you want to create contrast. You want to create variety. And, you know, something like this. It's got variety to it. You could put, maybe he has a hat and looking, maybe he's looking towards us. That, that can always be sort of interesting when the character looks towards you. Because uh, although the body is sort of facing this way, the eye is looking, I suppose, towards us. So that's supposed to be an arrow in perspective. Uh, it's looking towards us. So that's already more interesting. You know, it could be even better if we slightly turn the, the head a bit. Maybe make more of like a... Maybe a bit more like that. But it's still sort of in the same triangu triangular composition. So the point is that it's not, I mean, as long as this is looking cool, it's, it's great to, to build on top of that. Uh, you could do circles as well. You can also think of combining shapes. For instance, here we have like this basic triangle. Well, how could we break it up even more? Well, we could put like a, a circle somewhere, maybe like here, and that's adding more interest. But these shapes, I mean, they're still occupying, like this volume is about the same as this volume. But if I made the circle like this big, that's even more interesting because it's so much smaller than this shape. And so it adds um, contrast. So how do you train this? Well, it's really by practicing a lot. But one way that helped me um, practice this is thinking of things like a, a vase. Let's say you have a, a flower vase or vase, however you want to pronounce it, and it's like this, okay? And I mean, this is already kind of an interesting shape as opposed to, let's say I just did this. That's really boring, but it doesn't matter. You can use a boring shape too. It's really fine if you do, whatever. But um, one thing I like to do is consider this and consider it's like a, uh, a Japanese vase and you have to put a pattern on it. Okay. So what is going to look good on this? Um, think like a designer. So if you have this, well, you could do something like, I don't know, this, just put stripes all the way down. And I mean, you made, you did something, you made it a bit more interesting than if you did nothing, but it's not really a uh, brilliant design. So let's try something else. Let's keep with that and just move it. So we're, let's put like a bigger stripe here and then maybe a small stripe here. And I've changed the, like this is the thinnest, then it gets a bit thicker, then it gets a bit thicker. And then maybe down here, there's another stripe. So what we see now, um, as opposed to the one where you just had the stripes like this is this is much more designed, right? Like you've got this thin line, this big line, you've got the negative space in between, then you've got this huge negative space, then a little bit of positive. And often that's a very good combination, having a lot of negative and a little bit of positive or a lot of positive and a little bit of negative creates more contrast than if you uh, have things pretty even. I mean, there's a pretty easy way of, of showing this. If I have this blank page and I just make dots and I make them pretty much everywhere, evenly spaced, which dot are you going to look at first? Like which dot matters to you? Well, it's hard to say, right? They're kind of all even. But if I just do this and I make one small one, there 
like you're just gonna look at this one. You almost don't have a choice because it's different. It creates variety among these boring, and, and they're not boring inherently, it's just that there's a lot of them. Um, so yeah, you've got, a, your eye looks there because you, even though this is still boring, um, or it's, it, I mean, it's still got all these things, we're attracted to what's different. And so creating a lot of difference is very good. So here's a design that works better, right? For this, uh, we get these stripes. But you could also think in terms of like, what if I do one that, you know, doesn't go all the way across and it's sort of curved. And it stops here and then maybe it kind of continues up here. That's sort of interesting. And then maybe there's like a one that's thinner. Um, I mean, I'm not saying this is good design because as, as I mentioned before, I'm not a great designer by any means, but it is like a bit more interesting. And it's just a matter of creating a lot of these. Uh, you know, maybe you're thinking of, maybe there's like swirlies and maybe this swirl goes like that. And then this one comes around like this and goes like that, who knows, you know? But I'm trying to think of shapes, and I think this is, as I said, just a good way of practicing shapes to get uh, appealing designs. And like doing stuff like this will make it so when you do look at a page, uh, it's much easier to just think about, well, okay, how do I create a shape within this? Um, and it also matters, you know, depending on what you're doing. So let's say a person sitting down. Well, that's often this type of triangular shape. Um, or you can do like, think of the letter D, for instance, often works. Uh, maybe like this way. But you've got like this D shape. And I'm just thinking, okay, if I touch this side here, then I'm going to have more variation than if I just had it in the middle. So doing something like this and thinking, okay, here's a basic shape. So I roughly want to create a shape like this. And what I would recommend is starting out really like zoomed out. So you see the frame, you need to see the border of your frame. Uh, if you're drawing traditionally, uh, it really helps to just draw a frame like this, like create your own border on your page before you start so that you can see the edge of the frame. So start with a big brush and make a big basic shape. That's the first thing. Even if you're using reference, look at the reference, study it and think, can I arrange this on this frame to be more interesting? Uh, you may have done this thing with, uh, where you kind of look at, you know, you hold your fingers kind of like this, uh, and you create like this frame and you're trying to frame something within this and you've created like a viewfinder to, to find compositions. Well, you can kind of do that while thinking about whatever frame you have. In this case, it's a vertical frame. So start smaller in terms of your size and start with a big brush so you can just block in the basic things. Okay, so this is generally where I want the character to be. So there's a sitting character and they're kind of in this position. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, next thing I do, and this works very easily in digital, is I just create a new layer, lower the opacity of that original layer, and now work on top to get more information. So actually what I do is I look at this. I look at this character and I think, you know, I could make, I can make a lot of things. I can make the head here. I could make the head here. I could, you know, make the person sitting uh, like this. There's a lot of different ways I could create this character. And so I would stare at this for a while and I'll kind of think of all the different things I could do, all the different possibilities and what would be interesting and what would not be. For instance, if I made the character and, and this is more for like an exaggerated style, it doesn't work as well for realism, but like, let's say this was a head, right? If I made the character, so, you know, this is the body and these are the legs. Again, I mean, it's kind of interesting, but I've got a pretty boring relationship of this 
being very equal to this. Like these two shapes, the way I've divided the body, are two equal. Whereas if I thought of it more like, okay, so this whole part is the body, the upper body. Now this character feels like they have a lot of weight to them. Um, so let's just, you know, add a bit more to them. So yeah, they got a lot of weight. Then maybe they have like very dinky legs that come out. And so now by doing this, I've created a much more appealing design. And in terms of skill, um, it's not like this is super difficult skill-wise to do. Uh, it's, I mean, you, you do have to practice for sure, but it's not like a, an, ex an incredibly great display of skill, but it does feel kind of appealing, you know? Could have his uh, shoulders, and maybe I'll think I'm kind of getting into design for characters, so I'll just do that very little, but maybe he's holding like something, maybe he's holding like a bag of chips or something, I don't know. Um, but by having it, and even with the bag, I'm trying to think of where would they put designs? That's also another thing. If you look at products, if you look at like a bag of chips or anything, uh, any product, just study it. They have people designing these things. It's called industrial design. And they really think about things like shapes. So just studying like a shampoo bottle or even like you might just see like, oh, some pills on your your desk or something and you look at the container and it's just well you know this is designed you have this shape and then you have like a small shape here and then you've got this and you've got a label and the label occupies a certain spot and it's a certain size and looking for these types of shapes really helps so yeah so you get this guy and then even if he's not well drawn just as an image it's kind of interesting, right? Like the placement is okay, right? And so after this, I usually create like a rough sketch to get more of the character down. And then you can also uh, do the same thing, which is zoom in a bit, uh, lower the opacity of the prior layers, and then look at this once more. So now I'm looking at this character and I'm thinking about the entire head as one composition, almost like if this was the frame, what would be an interesting design? Like is, and this kind of sucks for people who are learning very generic, like the, the typical, you get a circle for a head or an oval, divide it, divide it, put the nose here, put the mouth here. It creates very boring designs. Uh, although, I mean, we spend a lot of time learning that because you need to start somewhere, uh, but, you know, maybe having like just the hairline way up here. It's like his hair's way up here. Uh, maybe his eyes are like down here. Got like a little nose. He's, maybe he's eating and his, his, his face is very blocky. So now we've got this character forming and it's just thinking about shapes. Again, I'm not thinking about uh, anything really. I mean, a little bit of anatomy that, yeah, okay, he has the basic uh, human features, but uh, much more, I'm much more thinking about shapes. And then, okay, so let's have this big back and it kind of goes into this humongous body and can think about this shape as being kind of okay, but a little boring, might be a bit more interesting if we really push this out, maybe have some man boobs here, you know, get this shape working. And you just start with a basic shape, which was this, oops, this shape. And then you add to it and then you um, go further and develop and refine. And that's how to create effective compositions, or at least it's one way to create effective compositions. Uh, you know, if, usually when you're working with landscapes, and this is talked about a bit more often, uh, you get like wide compositions and you try and think about things like the rule of thirds. Um, that's all good. That's fine. You know, you usually create a lot of negative space and a little bit of positive space or the alternative. Uh, but I find like these are much easier than when you actually have this type of like just a regular sheet of paper. And if you're doing like pinup style drawings, like, well, what do I do? Where do I put the character? Do I just put them dead center? Uh, well, that can be pretty boring if you do. So it 
it's kind of how do you create something interesting and you can also start not just with shapes but like with with line in terms of getting a flow but then i still think about shapes uh but let's say like you have the head and sort of out of frame and there is one thing i should mention when you do design like this it looks designed so that's one potential negative to it it tends to have a feeling of like an illustration um, if you're going for something a lot more candid, you might want to just not even think about this stuff too much, uh, but still a little bit. I mean, it still helps, but yeah, this creates kind of, okay, so let's just say there was a, I mean, it creates kind of a contrived design, I would say, but that's not a bad thing. It still looks cool. Let's say the leg, this leg's coming out like this, um, this face is... Not great, but you know, you got like this type of design now. It's like, yay, okay, cool. I, I the hand's doing this. Uh, who knows what the person's doing? But again, we started with this kind of flow and I didn't stick exactly to it, but kind of close. Um, so, you know, that's, it's just a, a one other way of starting, but I still think about shapes. And if I was to look at this and analyze it, I would say, well, you've got this pretty much going on. You've got this shape, sort of a triangular shape. And then in terms of negative space, you've got this and you've got that. And that's still going to work because it's kind of interesting. If you look at this, if you, if you didn't even know what it was and you just see this as if it was some abstract art, you'd be, I mean, you maybe think like, well, that's not that great, but at least it would be more interesting than if you just saw something that was like this, which is, unless, you know, you've got some psychological thing that makes you look at this and think, oh, that's better. Uh, usually this looks more appealing. So, I mean, I think this is good and this is not good, but, you know, really depends on, on you if you agree or if you want to implement these uh, things. But I would hope that if you're not already thinking about shapes, at least consider it because uh, it makes a huge difference. So, all right, that's, that's all I got. I hope this helped and thanks for watching.